Want to resist the temptation of eating an entire bag of chips in one sitting? What if we told you that all you need is a colored chip? That's right! Researchers have discovered a simple trick to help you ditch the snack cravings and watch your weight without even thinking about it. No more eat now, gym later mentality. But is this too good to be true? Let's crunch the numbers and find out if a colorful chip can really be the secret to staying healthy. Watch our video to the end to learn how to snack smarter. The year is 1853, and American Railroad tycoon Cornelius Vanderbilt had ordered fried potatoes at Moon Lake's house, a restaurant in the resort town of Saratoga Springs, New York. In the kitchen was a native African-American cook, George Crumb, and he was not pleased when Vanderbilt had the potatoes sent back because they were too thick. Whether Crumb was a truly petty man or just a stressed employee pissed off by the tycoon, only posterity can tell. But he was petty enough to fry some thinly sliced potatoes and send them to Vanderbilt as revenge. Fortunately for us, Vanderbilt was pleased with the impolite gesture and thus, America's favorite snack was born. Crumb's Saratoga chips were a hit with customers and their popularity spread beyond upstate New York. Seven years later, Crum opened his restaurant in Saratoga called Crum's House and placed an inviting bowl of potato chips on every table. By the time he died in 1914, he was arguably the best cook in America. That is the origin story of the potato chip as we know it, but there have been disagreements on the original inventor of the snack. According to historians, an 1817 cookbook by an English doctor named William Kitchener contained a recipe that read, potatoes fried in slices or shavings. Also, four years before Crumb's version of potato chips were born, there was reportedly a Saratoga Springs cook named Eliza who had a potato frying reputation. Whichever story is to be followed, it is undeniable that George Crumb popularized potato chips. However, modern potato chips also benefited from the innovations of others such as Lauren Shutter who began packaging them in wax paper bags, and Leonard Jap, who mass-produced them from Al Capone. A century and a half after its invention, potato chips are one of the most popular snacks in the world. Unfortunately, it has also posed a very big problem to our health. In 1961, American snack company Lay's hired the Wizard of Oz actor Burt Lahr to be their company ambassador. It was Lar who first spoke the taunting challenge, bet you can't eat just one. Today, it has become an advertising cliche with various companies telling customers you can't just eat one. And yes, they cannot. According to Statista, 34.69 million Americans consumed 16 bags or more in 2020. On a year-to-year -year basis, Americans eat 1.85 billion pounds of potato chips annually. That is 6.6 .6 pounds per person. Economically, the sale of chips is very viable. The United States has a $10.5 billion chips market, and the estimate excludes tortilla chips, cheese puffs, and pretzels. Lay's clinched 30% of the potato chip market in 2017 with $1.7 billion worth of sales, almost $2 billion in just the sale of potato chips. But the U.S. is not alone in its love for potato chips. According to FoodBev Media, the United States and France are tied at number one on the list of biggest potato chip consumers. At least 86% of people in France eat potato chips, and even more, the French see potato chips as a part of a good meal rather than a snack. Chips can be found at the table at chicken dinner, a good combination that we can all agree on. Researchers from the University of Pennsylvania and Cornell University teamed together to solve a problem. How do you get a person to stop at one bag of chips? Since Crumb's exasperation over Vanderbilt's fussy eating gave birth to the potato chip, it has become one of the world's most beloved snacks. One bag of chips is never enough, but can it be? 98 students took part in the study and were divided into two groups. Both groups were served tubes of Lay's stackable potato chips while watching video clips in class. The first group were giving tubes with red dyed chips used as dividers at various intervals, sectioning the chips into different serving sizes from 5 to 14. 
The second group was given potato chips without dividers. The study took place in two separate experiments. In the first experiment, the dividers were interspersed at serving size intervals of 7 chips and 14 chips. In the second experiment, the sizes were changed from 5 to 10 chips. The students were not told why some of the chips were red or why the chips were divided. Nonetheless, those served the tubes with dividers consumed less than 50% of those without red chips in their stackables. On average, the subjects with dividers ate 20 chips in those tubes along with a 7-chip serving size, and 24 chips in those tubes with a 14-chip serving size. The results were also consistently less in a 5-chip and 10-chip containers as 14 and 16 chips were eaten in both tubes respectively. In the other group, 35 chips had been eaten. The first group was also better able to estimate how many chips they had eaten. Those in the control groups underestimated the amount of chips that they had consumed by about 13 chips. Those in the segmented groups were able to guess within one chip. The findings of the study were published in Health Psychology, a journal of the American Psychological Association. The lead researchers were Brian Wansink of Cornell Food and Brand Lab, Andrew Gear of Yale University, and Paul Rosen of the University of Pennsylvania. Wansink is a John Dyson Professor of Consumer Behavior and the author of the bestseller Mindless Eating – Why We Eat More Than We Think. Speaking on the results of their research, he said, an increasing amount of research suggests that some people use visual indication, such as a clean plate or a bottom of a bowl, to tell them when to stop eating. By inserting visual markers in a snack food package, we may be able to help them monitor how much they are eating and interrupt their semi-automated eating habits. He also noted that modest reductions in intake produced by environmental changes would significantly boost public health because it can lead to substantial weight loss. On the subject of using visual markers to get people to stop eating, he makes a strong point as most people just can't seem to get enough potato chips, and that brings up the snacking problem. Unfortunately, if you are trying to lose weight or live healthily, potato chips are your biggest enemies. Chips beat soda, candy, and ice cream as the worst junk food. This is mostly because it's difficult to stop eating them once you have taken the first bite. They are tasty, crispy, and crunchy. Almost nobody stops at one can of chips, and each daily serving of chips can contain 160 calories per one ounce. A Harvard study found that potato chips added 1.69 pounds to a person's weight on average over the period of four years. In comparison, sweets and desserts added 0.41 pounds, and starchy potatoes added 1.28 pounds. With such alarming statistics, it can only be expected that eating potato chips would have adverse effects on your health. Obesity and weight gain is the primary problem posed by consuming potato chips. Eating salty food makes you crave more fatty food in general, and that decreases your chance of losing extra weight. Also, the nutritional value of potato chips is low, as it is filled with calories, fat, and sodium. Consuming bags of chips would only make you hungry quicker and eat more. Since potato chips are essentially the most popular salty food, the question of hypertension also comes into play. There is a risk of developing high blood pressure due to the high sodium content in potato chips. Studies have also linked consumption to heart disease. Finally, the risk of developing cancer is significantly higher for regular potato chip consumers. Yes, it seems unlikely, and no one would like to have their love for the snack ruined, but there is data to prove it. According to the American Cancer Society, potato chips contain acrylamide, which has been linked to malignant cancer cells in mice. Paul Rosen, one of the authors of the Cornell University study, puts the topic of portion control succinctly. People tend to eat what you put in front of them. If you put less in front of them and give them a signal, they will take it. His observation is confirmed by Barbara Rolls, professor of nutritional sciences at Penn State. In a separate study, she found that more bags of potato chips make people eat more. Interestingly, eating too much potato chips is never a problem as her study subjects had no problem eating normal portions at dinner. If that is the case, is minimizing the portion of food eaten the key to controlling obesity? 
Rosen believes it is. He noted that the French eat smaller portions than Americans. They also tend to eat slowly, savoring their food. Surprisingly, although they eat food with higher fat content, they do not suffer cardiovascular diseases like Americans and have a higher life expectancy. Rosen explains that the secret lies in eating smaller portions. So, while hitting the gym can help you stay healthy, eating small portions is the main deal.